Hello and welcome to another video from Videos and Fly Fishing. Today I'm going to present for you this little fly. I saw it first on the internet uh, called the uh, Swimming Caddis Pupa and I uh, have also seen it uh, called the uh, Vida Pupa. So I guess this is a vari variation of those two. Uh, well, I know a good fishing fly when I see one and this fly is one of those. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna tell you now a little about uh, how I tie this fly and uh, what materials I'm using. I start with the hook. I'm gonna use this kind of hook. This is a clean, clean camera, size 12 from Partridge. And I'm gonna use a two millimeter tan foam to make the body. Also, I'm going to use a little mix uh, uh, brown olive uh, hair hairs kind of dubbing. That's uh, free of choice what kind of dubbing you using. I want to use some dubbing with a little spike on it. And I'm going to use some tread. This is the tread I'm using. This is the white tread, uh, which I am uh, make my color with a brown marker pen. You can also get uh, other, other colors. Uh, I use this brown. Uh, also gonna use some uh, Swix, Ski Wax, to uh, make uh, the hairs stick in a dubbing loop when I'm making those uh, raw deer here in this loop. This raw deer, Norwegian raw deer. Also gonna use some uh, liquid fusion to attach the body to the hook and make it all stick together uh, let's see if I got have got forgotten anything uh, well uh, the dubbing I've covered uh, covered the hook and I covered the body and the dubbing the raw deer well that's about it uh, I'm gonna now tell you how to make this body and how to make the fly so follow up to with the video. Well, hello, and welcome to the tying part of this video. Uh, I'm gonna start with taking this uh, fly out of the vise, replace it with a sewing needle, sewing needle, sorry, and just now we're gonna make the back body. No, stays there. Well, start with. Attaching my thread. And take out this foam. It's about uh, five millimeters long. And wind back. So long I want this body to be. It's about that. Yes. I think that's right. I use this uh, marker pen, color it just way down. I use uh, Norweiss uh, bobbin for this, uh, automatic bobbin, it's very nice. Little commercial there. And now I'm gonna take my dubbing, wind the thread forwards again, take the dubbing. I dub the body, make a fairly thick body because you're gonna comb it out afterwards. Wind it on. Like that. And 
well, I'm gonna color a little more of this thread. So, then you take your thread a little forward, make a wrap, take the foam over it, make the first segment, round, two twice, twice, go into another segment, like that, forwards again, another segment, like that, forwards again, another segment, like that, okay, it's up to you how many segments you want on this fly, forwards again, and the last segment for me. And take a hand whip finish, two, three, four, maybe. Secure it, snip the thread off. Push it out from the needle. Take out the excess thread. And the back body is finished, 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 finished. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, you know, English, not my native language. So sometimes let's get some hiccups. Okay. I take this uh, needle out of the wise. You don't need it now and take the hook, adjust the wise a little bit, a little more. You know, you heard it's that sound. It stays good in my Stormfall Transformer. Well, gonna start again with attaching my thread. Take some liquid fusion. Little bit. I don't, I'm allergic to allergic to super, super glue, so so I can't use that. So I use that instead. It works very really good for me. Now I'm gonna find this uh, little body I had, I got, and um, start with whipping this backwards, attaching this onto the hook, maybe a little bit further forwards and touch it start with getting it all the way to the hook eye like that and I take the four the uh, upper one do like that attach it of course you others people can do uh, can use super glue if you want you don't have to use liquid fusion it's a pain in the ass to get it uh, have to buy it uh, on ebay so it's not very accessible for me but well what you gotta do is what you gotta do so i take another uh, coloration of my thread a little bit of that a little bit of this now i'm gonna take I'll leave the bottom one, snip off the upper, and I'm gonna take some more dubbing on, dub this little gap here with the dubbing, just to make it look nicer, I think. You can leave this if you don't want to have dubbing here but I like this. Now we're gonna take some deer here and I'm gonna split the thread and then I'm gonna use my uh, hand drill uh, pin wise is also called I placed it with a sewing machine needle this is very flat and very good for splitting threads 
So what I'm gonna do, this is uh, not an easy thread to split, but I'm gonna take it in my fingers and just my, use my nails and drag on it to flatten it. Let's see if I can manage this on video. And try to find the middle of the thread. It's not so easy when your eyesight is like a night owl in daylight. Where? There we have it. And I'm gonna use some ski wax to attach on the thread so make the hairs stay inside the loop and don't fall out and I'm gonna place it over my knobs in the stone for transformer and take out a healthy bunch of uh, deer hair just try to find some place where the hairs are equal snip out a little bunch of uh, hair I think that's more than enough. I place it in my Stonefoss clip right around there with the points in. in. And I take a kind of a large scissors and snip up, snip it off there. Try to make this tidy as I can. All these hairs lying around it makes my wife go crazy, so I don't want that. And I put it in my loop. Try not to make it fall out. Spin my bobbin. Try to make it transferring to the hairs can see it coming there it's not the best thread for spinning of course I should have used the uh, GSP thread or something but uh, it goes okay just have to spin it all up like that and now I'm gonna wind it through the dubbing here all the way to the hook eye. See that's looking very nice I think. And I'm gonna leave this little lip here because I wind the thread in forwards of it in, in front of it and make my whip finish three times like that. Okay. And now I take a little more dubbing, a little bit. And in front of this, and a second whip finish. Make a tug on it, snip this off, place my bobbin on the stand and use a little tool. If you can use, uh, my god, what do you call it in English? Uh, well, a little brush, just brush it out on the sides here to make it look a little buggy. Like that. And snip off the lip. Not quite in, make it a little bit like this. Because this lip will make it uh, move some water when you're fishing it. And it uh, will stay in the surface. So, what I think folks, does this look buggy or not? I think it's very very nice. I'm gonna 
Look very forward to use this in the summer after trout and grayling, especially trout. That's what they sit uh, more of in my home waters. I'm gonna use this in still water. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna have great success with this. Uh, other people have uh, used it before me and have been very pleased. So that was my contribution to this uh, invention of fly, invention of making this uh, type of body. Very nice with a top uh, body of foam with the segmentation, segmentation uh, and uh, the underbody of uh, dubbing with the combination of uh, deer hair and foam. That's a killer. That's a real killer, folks. That's all I had. And uh, if you like this video, so please like and subscribe. And uh, I try to post video every now and then, uh, often two times a week, maybe more. So uh, thank you all for watching and bye bye.